بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد النبي الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد In the previous lecture of uh, the Traveler's Prayer we talked about the distance that if you travel you can shorten your prayer so today inshallah we're going to talk about something very important which is praying on the plane when someone is traveling this is something that a lot of people ask questions how to pray should i pray before uh before boarding or should i wait until i land and also when i'm on the plane should i the, if i'm if i'm praying on the plane should i go with the departure city timing or the city of arrival time. Let's say I'm going from JFK to Saudi Arabia. So I'm on the plane, the time for the prayer. Do I go with Saudi Arabia time or JFK or New York time? So inshallah, all of that and more we will be discussing tonight bi idhnil mawla azza wa jal. Before we go any further, <clears throat> I want to clarify that the safar, traveling, is one of the reasons that make you or gives you the permission to shorten the salat. So salat al-dhuhr, salat al-asr, and salat al-isha, you pray them too. But we do not have any other reason that allows you to do so. Except in the day of Arafah, when you go to Arafah, you pray salat al-dhuhr and asr, jam'an wa qasran. Shorten the salat and praying them together. But for, the, for, for, for sickness, if someone is sick, we know that you can pray making the jam'ah, the combination. If someone is sick and it's really hard on him to pray Salatul Dhuhr on his time and then pray Salatul Asr, he can pray both together in the time of Salatul Dhuhr, Dhuhr and Asr. But he cannot shorten the Salawat. He can pray Salatul Dhuhr. Ya Ikhwan, al fil khalf arkhu aswatakum Allah arda alaykum. Ya Ikhwan. So, because of the sickness, you cannot shorten the salat. You can do the combination, you can do the jama'ah. That's not a problem. But you cannot do so because of the sickness. You cannot do the, 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 the qasr, shorten the salawat because of the sickness. But you can do that, or you can do the combination because of the hardship of praying every salat on its time. And same thing when we have any hardship, for example, the raining. When it's raining, and it's really hard for us to go home and come back for the Salat. So we can pray Salatul Dhuhr and Salatul Asr together. And if it keeps raining, we can do the same with Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha. But we cannot shorten the Salat because of the rain or because of the snow. So this is very important to understand. This is very, very important to understand. And one of the questions also that a lot of brothers ask is that because of my job, can I do the combination? Can I make the Jama'ah? No, you can't make the Jama'ah. Some people say, I have to work from 8 o'clock all the way till 5 o'clock. So I want to make the jam'ah, salatul dhuhr and salatul asr together. No, you can't do the jam'ah because of the job. You cannot do the jam'ah because of the job. You can do the jam'ah because of traveling. You can do the jam'ah combining the two prayers because of sickness, because of the rain, when it's raining. So the jama'ah, the congregation in the masjid pray two prayers uh, in one time. And... If for any, any, any hardship, you can do this, but not because of the job. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhu al-ladheena amanu, idha nudiya li salati min yawm al-jumu'ati, fasa'u ila dhikrillahi wa dhiru al-bay'i. Or who you believe when it's called for the prayer on Friday, leave and abandon the selling, the business. Go to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the salat. So because of the job, you cannot make the jama'ah. You have to pray every salat on time. But we have something very important, which is called al jamu suri It is a combination, but it's not a combination. It is jama, but it's not jama. How is that? An example, I have to work from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way till 5 o'clock, or all the way till 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock is the time of Salatul al-Maghrib, or after Salatul al-Maghrib. Okay, so now I'm going to miss Dhuhr and I'm going to miss Asr. And I'm only allowed to have one break in my job. How am I going to pray Salatul Dhuhr on time and pray Salatul Asr on time? There is a solution, which is Al-Jam'u Al-Suri. Al-Jam'u Al-Suri. What does that mean? To pray Salatul Dhuhr at the end of the time for Salatul Dhuhr and pray Salatul Asr in the beginning of Salatul Asr. How is that? Salatul Dhuhr 
the adhan for Salatul Dhuhr is at 12.15, right? 12.15. So that's the beginning in the start of Salatul Dhuhr. And that is open all the way till the time of Adhan al-Asr. All of that is a valid time to pray Salatul Dhuhr. So Adhan al-Dhuhr is at 12.30, 12.15. Salatul al-Asr is uh, 3.30. 3.30. So from 12.30 to 3.30 is the window that you can pray Salatul Dhuhr and you're going to be considered that you pray on time. We get this inshallah. So if you pray at 12.30, you're on time. 1.30 on time. 2.30 on time. But we have to pay attention to praying in a congregation, missing the jama'ah. Someone could pray on time, but he prays at home. So he's sinful because of not praying in the congregation. So we have to uh, distinguish between praying in the jama'ah and praying on time. So whoever prays in this window of time, he is on time. Okay? So now you can have your break since Salatul Asr, the Adam for Salatul Asr is at 3.30. You can have your break from 3.15 to 3.45. Okay? When you have the break, you're going to pray Salatul Dhuhr at 3.15 or 3.20. Still in the window of Salat, the time of Salat al-Dhuhr. Then you wait for a little bit, maybe five minutes or less. Then they're going to call for Adhan al-Asr at 3.30. Okay? And then you're going to make the Iqama and pray Salat al-Asr. So this way, you have prayed Salat al-Dhuhr on time, but at the end of the time for Salat al-Dhuhr, and you pray Salat al-Asr at the beginning of the time for Salat al-Asr. So this is clear, inshallah. Salat al-Dhuhr on time and Salat al-Asr on time. It's not jama' because you did not wait until the time for Salatul Asr is called and you pray Dhuhr and Asr together. That's jama' And also you did not pray Salatul Asr with the Dhuhr together. No. You pray Salatul Dhuhr before calling for Adhan al-Asr. Then you wait a little bit. After calling for Adhan al-Asr, you pray Salatul Asr. So every Salat is prayed on time. So that's what the scholars call, call al-jam'u al-suri. It is jama' but it's not jama' at the same time. You pray, the two prayers are so close to each other, but each prayer is being prayed in its, in, in its time. So this is clear, inshaAllah. Jama'a suri ya ikhwani, hadhi min al-asila shai'a allati yas'aluha al-nas. Indama akunu fi al-amal, hal ajma'a salawati al-ajil al-amal, la yajuz jama'a salawati al-ajil al-amal. Yajuz al-jama'a li-ajil al-safar, wa yajuz al-jama'a li-ajil al-marad, wa yajuz al-jama'a li-ajil al-matar, aw li-ajil al-thalj, أو لأجل البرد الشديد مع الريح وهذا خاص بصلاة العشاءين المغرب والعشاء يكون هناك برد شديد ورياح فيجوز الجمع لكن العمل ليس مسوغ لأن نجمع الصلاة لكن هناك شيء يسمى الجمع الصوري هو جمع في الصورة وفي الحقيقة ليس بجمع كيف تصلي صلاة الظهر في آخر وقتها وصلاة العصر في أول وقتها فلنفترض أن امرأة يعمل من الساعة الثامنة صباحا حتى الساعة الخامسة مساء ويريد أن يصلي الظهر في وقته والعصر في وقته كيف يصلي أذان الظهر من الساعة الثانية عشرة والربع وأذان الـ 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 أذان الظهر الساعة الثانية عشرة والربع وأذان العصر الساعة الثالثة والنصف فهذا هو وقت صلاة الظهر من بعد أذان الظهر إلى قبل أذان العصر هذا وقت صلاة العصر فمن الممكن أن تأخذ فترة استراحة واحدة من الساعة الثالثة والربع إلى الساعة الثالثة وخمسة وأربعين دقيقة أول ما تأخذ البريك أو الاستراحة تصلي الظهر مباشرة ثم تنتظر قليلا ويؤذن للعصر فتقيم وتصلي صلاة العصر فبذلك أنت صليت الظهر في آخر وقتها وصليت العصر في أول وقتها فهو جمع في الصورة لكنه ليس جمع في الحقيقة لأن كل صلاة أديت في وقتها yes. The condition to, to make the jama? Al jama al suri. What I'm talking about is someone who uh, he can't pray on time because he can only have one break at his job. So some people, what they do, they don't pray. They have all of the prayers. When they go home, they when they come home, they pray them all. That's not acceptable. Every salat must be prayed on its time. So if you could have one break during your job. In this way, you pray Dhuhr at the end of his time in Asr, in the beginning of the time for Salatul Asr. 
you know, and this is not something that I encourage you to do. As a Muslim, you are required to pray your prayer on time. But sometimes a lot of people ask me this question, which is we can have two breaks and we're going to miss the salat. Or when we come home, we pray all of the salawat. That's not acceptable. The job is not a reason for you to miss the salat. You have to pray. The only time that you don't have to pray when you pass away, when you're in the grave. That's the time you don't have to pray. Even if you're sick, you have to pray. If you cannot pray standing, you pray sitting. If you cannot pray sitting, you pray laying down. And you have to pray. The only time that you do not have to pray when you go to your grave. Yes. You can make the combination, but do not make the qasr shorten in the salat. So dhuhr for, asr for, all together in the time of al dhuhr or all, all together in the time of al-asr. But you have to be extremely sick and praying, it, it puts you in, 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 in so much pain. So this way you can make the jamah because you're sick. And also if it's raining or if it's uh, snowing or it's extremely cold with the wind. So we can make the jamah and pray salatul al-maghrib and asha together. Yes. فأبردوا يؤخر صلاة الظهر إلى آخر وقتها وهذا اللي قالوا قالوا العلماء أنه يكون جمع صوري لأنه بتصلي الظهر في آخر وقتها فهمت علي؟ أنت بتصلي الظهر قبل وقت العصر لماذا؟ لأن الشمس حارة وفي وقتها ما كان في مكيفات وكذا فكانوا يصلون الظهر متأخرا فهذا يعني ينبغي وهذه سنة لا بد أن تفعل في الحر لكن بر... لا بد أن تراعى مصالح الناس يعني مثلا في بعض الأماكن شق على الناس أن نصلي بهم الظهر متأخر متأخرين فمتعودون أن يصلوا في نفس الوقت والحمد لله الآن يعني هناك مكيفات والأمر سهل لكن عموما هذه سنة التبع فإن كنا في مكان الحر شديد نؤخر صلاة الظهر إلى آخر وقتها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يبرد في صلاة الظهر بمعنى أنه كان يصلي صلاة الظهر في آخر وقتها وليس في أول وقتها أوكي okay, something also to understand because in the previous class when I talk about uh, shortening the salat, the qasr, I didn't talk about the jama'ah. So for someone who is traveling, he can do two things. Shortening the salat, any, any prayer that consists of four rak'at, you make it two. And at the same time, praying two prayers at one time. And that in the case of salatul dhuhr and asr and also salatul maghrib and isha together. So if someone is traveling, he can pray salatul dhuhr and salatul asr once he's called for, for adhan al dhuhr. So we have jama'ah taqdeem and jama'ah ta'khir. Jama'a taqdeem and jama'a ta'khir. What does that mean? Jama'a taqdeem, that we pray Salatul Asr and Salatul Dhuhr in the time of Salatul Dhuhr. It's called for Adhan al Dhuhr now. So I'm going to make the Iqama and pray Salatul Dhuhr right after Salatul Asr. And also, if I cannot pray for any reason, I'm driving and I'm in an area that I, that, that, that I can stop and pray or I don't want to pray in this area. So I can wait till the time for Salatul Asr and pray Salatul Dhuhr and Salatul Asr together in the time of Salatul Asr. Making that late combination. And I can do the same for Salatul Maghrib. I'm traveling. I can pray Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha together when it's called for Adanul Maghrib. And also, I can do uh, Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha together when it's called for Salatul Isha. So I'm praying Maghrib, Al Maghrib late. So that's something permissible. And based on understanding, our understanding for this, inshallah, we're going to understand a lot of things that is very important when you travel on the plane how to pray. Take it easy. A lot of people are confused about this. How to pray? Should we pray on the plane? Should we pray sitting or standing? We know that praying standing is something uh, that is, is a pillar. So rukun in the salat, in the obligatory prayers. You have to pray standing. As long as you can bear praying standing. But a lot of people pray sitting. And we have a lot of solutions that I'm going to mention. How to pray standing and on the plane. Insha'Allah. So now... If you're traveling, rule number one, try to avoid playing, uh, praying on the plane. Try to avoid praying on the plane. Why? Because you're going to lose the khushur. Praying on the plane is not going to give you as much khushur as you could have when you are uh, on the ground. So try to avoid praying on the plane. An example, I'm traveling to Texas or going to California or going to Canada, and my flight is at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. in the evening, okay? Uh, 3 p.m. afternoon, in the afternoon. So by 12.30, I'm at the airport, and my flight is at 3 p.m., okay? So now I'm going to check in and go through the security check and everything. So by 1 o'clock, I'm next to the gate. 
don't wait immediately pray salatul dhuhr in salatul al asr because you can do short, you can shorten the salat the qasr and you can make jam'a taqdeem you pray salatul asr early with salatul dhuhr so now you're done with salatul asr by 3 o'clock you're flying right by 3 o'clock you're flying 3.30 is the time for salatul asr you have already prayed you're good you don't have to pray okay and you're gonna land by 10 o'clock at night while you are flying by five o'clock is the time for Salatul Maghrib. Don't pray. Wait and make Jam'u Ta'khir. Pray late. Pray Salatul Maghrib late along with Salatul Isha. Because that's permissible for you. You don't have to pray Salatul Maghrib on time. You can postpone praying it till the time of Salatul Isha. So it's five o'clock, you're flying. Don't pray, wait. You're gonna land by ten o'clock. Once you land, you pray Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha together. So this way you avoid playing, praying on the plane. And this is going to give you more khushu' in your salat. And you're going to be more focused in your salat. So this is inshallah understood. And something that we have to understand also, a lot of people think that when they uh, have to pray, they have to pray in a masjid, in a mosque. So when I'm at the airport, I can't pray anywhere. I have to go to the uh, uh, area that made as masjid or a prayer hall. You can pray anywhere. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari وَجُعِلَتِ لِي الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا فَأَيُّمَا رَجْلٌ مِّنْ أُمَّةِ أَدْرَكَتْهُ الصَّلَاةُ فَلْيُصَلِّي The earth is made as masjid and clean and pure for me. So any one of my ummah, when the salat is obligatory upon him, he should pray anywhere, anywhere, on the grass, on the street, anywhere you can pray. The earth is a mystery for you, as long as it's clean. There's no any najasa. You can't see any najasa on the ground, and you cannot smell it. So that place is pure. You can pray. And you do not even have to have the sujada, the, the, the praying mark, even if you do not have it. You travel, you can pull uh, over on the grass, it's clean, there's no any dirt, there's no any najasa. You cannot smell it, you cannot see it, you can pray on the, on the grass. You don't need a sujada, you don't need a praying mark. This is something that we must understand. Yes. But I, I did talk about this in the previous lecture that the time you are allowed to shorten the salat and to make the jama'ah, the combination, when you leave the town. So when you are in town, you cannot do that. So you have to start your journey for that to be permissible for you. I did talk about that in the previous lecture. So this is very important to understand. I met someone, I was in Istanbul, so I had a long transit, so I'm going through the city to have a, to have a, a, a tour. So I met a brother from Indonesia. He missed his flight. I had a good time with him during the tour. So I asked him, what happened? He said he was coming from Germany going to Indonesia. And he was transiting through uh, Istanbul. So he has like an hour or an hour and a half uh, uh, transit time. So it is the time to pray. He asked people, where is the masjid? They told him you have to go through the immigration and you go and find the masjid and pray. But he has a very short time. He was supposed to stay in the transit area and go to the gate and catch his next flight. But he goes through the immigration and he went to the masjid, prayed at the masjid, and then he has to come back and go through immigration again to go back to the transit area. And he missed his flight. And he had to pay $500. Well, it was simple. He can pray anywhere. I told you, you can pray anywhere. You don't have to go to the masjid. Just pray in the transit area. No, at the airport, the musalla is you have to go through the immigration to, yeah, to find the musalla. But he can pray anywhere. Find out the direction of the qibla and pray. Simple. So this is very important to understand. So he lost $500 when I understand this simple mas'ala. He can pray anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the masjid in the airport. And he misses flight. So this is very important to understand. It is not necessarily to be at the masjid of the airport. Do your best to pray there. Why? Because... It's a good environment, and it's a mosque, and you're going to be more comfortable, and it's going to be closed, and uh, people are not watching you, and you're not going to be distracted by people passing by you. But for any reason, you uh, in a, uh, you in uh, an airport that they do not have a masjid. Some airports they don't have that. You can pray anywhere. It does not necessarily to be at the masjid. This is something very important 
that we must understand. So do your best to avoid praying on the plane. Okay, if it's no way for me to avoid praying on the plane, I have a long trip. Let's say I'm going to Jordan, to Saudi Arabia, to Pakistan, to Egypt. At least I'm going to fly for 10 hours. So let's say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, the takeoff is at 10 o'clock in the morning. So definitely I'm going to meet Dhuhr and, 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 and Asr and Asha and, uh, and Maghrib and Asha while I'm on the plane. So I have to pray on the plane. But the question that people ask when I'm on the plane, I'm praying on the plane. Should I go with the time of the, of the destination city or should I go with the time of the departure city? The, the answer is that you go with your local time on the plane. You go with your local time on the plane. You have two ways of knowing if it's the time to pray on the plane or if it's not the time to pray. The first solution is onboard internet. Some airlines, I was recently on uh, Qatar Airways, they have onboard internet. They offer like 20 minutes, the first 20 minutes for free and after that you have to pay. Anyway, when you pay, you have connection. And you can know the local time. It tells you that you're in German, on Germany. You're above Germany or Italy or whatever. So you know the local time. When you go to the Adhan app also, it tells you the Adhan time. And a lot of airlines, they have the, inter the onboard internet. So you have to check if they have it. If, and also it's something that you're interested in and something that you can afford. So you can do that. That's a solution. So you can know the local time and you, you can find out if it's the time to pray or not. And also, you can, even if you do not have that, you don't want to have the internet, you cannot afford it, or you don't have a smartphone. You have a way of knowing the time for the prayer. I um, uh, want to find out when is the time for Salatul Fajr. It's dark. How am I going to know? Whenever I see the dawn, the Fajr, whenever I see the light, just look at the window. I don't have to care about my destination time or the, the U.S. time. My, my local time, the plane. So you can just look through the window if you start seeing the light. So meaning that the day is coming out. So that's the time for Salatul Fajr. You just pray. If for any reason you slept, you did not wake up till the sunset, that's okay. Because even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling once and he slept. And all of the Sahaba slept and nobody wake up. And the first person woke up it was Bilal. And the sunset was already there. But don't do it intentionally, sleep, and not wake up for Salatul Fajr. If it happens, you slept and you did not wake up till the sunset, so you're good. And also for Salatul Dhuhr, you can use your brain. For example, uh, my flight, the departure is at 10 o'clock. Okay, we're flying. So definitely after five hours, I'm either in the time for Salatul Asr in my local uh, area, or I'm in the time for Salatul Dhuhr, and I can do the combination, I can do the jama'ah. So I'm good. And also, if you want to know the time for Salatul Maghrib, it's going to be day, a day. And then all of the sun is going to start getting dark. Whenever it's dark, that's the time for Salatul Maghrib. You just put Salatul Maghrib and Salatul Isha together. And also, one of the questions that people ask is that how can I know the direction of the Qibla? How can I know the direction of the Qibla? A lot of Muslim airlines, they provide this. Saudi so Airlines and Qatar Airways also. And... I think most of the Muslim era, they provide this. Tijahul Qibla, the, the, the direction of the Qibla on the map. So you can know the direction and pray. And also at the same time, if you have the internet, onboard internet, you can use your phone to figure out where the Qibla is. And also by knowing the direction of the flight. If I'm flying to J from JFK to Saudi Arabia. So it's going to the direction of the Qibla. So meaning that. This is the plane, this is the front, and this is the back of the plane. So this is the direction of the Qibla. Because I'm going to the direction of uh, Saudi Arabia. If I'm coming back from Saudi Arabia to JFK, so I'm going to pray to the rear of the plane. So you just have to use the map. And they have the map. You can do your best to find out where is the Qibla. Do your best to find out where is the Qibla. And then you can pray. Okay, one of the very important questions, which is, uh, how should I pray? Sitting or standing? A lot of people say, we pray sitting. We cannot pray standing on the plane. No, you can pray standing on the plane. Some airlines, for example, Saudi Arabia, they have a prayer, prayer area. You can pray on the plane. So you're good. If you pray sitting, your salat is batila. You have to know this. 
if you own Saudi Airlines and they have a prayer place and you know about it, but you didn't go there, you pray on the chair, your salat is batila because it's missing one rukun, which is praying standing. So you have to pray standing. That's a pillar, except for the person that cannot pray standing. And I don't know if other Muslim airlines, they do this. I don't know. But anyway, Saudi Airlines, they have this. Okay, what about if they do not have the masjid or a prayer place on the plane? What do you have to do? You can pray in the kitchen. You can, yeah, seriously. I did that on Turkish Airlines, uh, Qatar Airways, Iberia, British Airways. You just have to wait. Whenever they finish serving the food, you go to them and tell them, I want to pray. They will allow you to pray. They will allow you to pray. Pray in the kitchen. You have to wait for them till they finish serving the food. Just go to them and talk to them. I want to pray. They will welcome you. And I was a little scared when I tried it on Iberia. It's a Spanish airways, it's not Muslim airways. So I was thinking that they're going to refuse it. They were friendly. I said, it's okay, pray. And I prayed, standing. So go to the kitchen uh, after they finish serving the food and ask them. And inshallah, they will allow you to pray standing this way. You are praying uh, standing, and this is a pillar in the salat. So this is very important to know. And as we plan for our travel, so we have to plan for our prayer. Whenever you're traveling, you're going to plan what you're going to take, what you're going to do. So the first thing you have to do is to plan how you're going to pray. It's important. You have to plan how you go going to pray because we have to pray as long as we are alive. The only time we can now pray when we pass away. So this is something very important to take in consideration. This is something very important to plan for when you're traveling. And this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you in the travel and your travel becomes successful and you reach your destination safely. Bi'ithnillah. So inshallah, this is what we have for tonight. And we're going to keep talking about the prayer, uh, the, the travel's prayer on Thursday. Any questions? You have a question? Nobody has any question? طيب, Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, we keep talking about the travel's prayer. On Thursday, بإذن الله وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين.